Haley, and I'm here to introduce this week's guest, Dr. Kevin Christie. He's a chiropractic physician and certified ergonomic assessment specialist who dedicates himself to treating his patient's symptoms and physical dysfunctions, whether it's a professional athlete, a weekend golfer, or an office worker. Dr. Christie received his BS degree from the Florida State University in exercise physiology and was an assistant strength and conditioning coach for the women's athletic teams. This is where he discovered his passion for working with athletes of all levels. His education and desire for learning continued at Logan College of Chiropractic in St. Louis, where he specialized in motion palpation, golf biomechanics, and functional rehabilitation. Now, I just finished listening to this episode, and I have to say, Dr. Christie brings a lot of value. He talks about marketing, specializing in sports chiropractic, building a business, and building a brand. So whether you're a student, new doctor, or experienced chiropractor, you are going to want to listen. I know he is going to answer some of those questions that you've probably gone to Facebook or Google and looked for the answer, but you will not find them there because Dr. Christie is bringing them only to one place, the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast with Dr. Richard Day. So without further ado, I bring you Dr. Kevin Christie and Dr. Richard Day. Hey, thanks so much for coming on today. I'm really excited to have you. I've uh, kind of followed you online for a while and and there's so much we could be talking about. We only have so much time, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I'm I'm big on starting with why and getting clear on that and I, I know you are too. Um, so why don't we start with that? Can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to become a chiropractor? Yeah, actually, I was an athlete growing up, baseball player in particular, and um, just was dealing with a sports injury. It was a hip issue at the time. And my mom had always gone to a chiropractor, so she had me go and, and it helped. And, and that really uh, was my first experience with the profession and, and it was good. And then uh, honestly, I think it was my junior year, we had to do a report on a profession we thought we wanted to do. And at that point, I didn't really have anything in mind. And uh, my my mom was like, well, why don't you do it on the chiropractor? So I did that pretty extensive report where we had to interview someone. We had to research a lot of the details of the profession um, and then give a, a, a pretty lengthy report written and, and oral. And, and so I did it on a chiropractor. And at that point, I made up my mind I was going to do that. And, and I luckily stuck to it. Uh, very cool. My my story is a little different than that, but I know a lot of people do come into it through through injuries um, and uh, end up going into to practice. And I know that that's one of the areas of focus that uh, that you've gone into is sports. Correct? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But uh, one of the things in just researching you, I always like to kind of you know do my due diligence and see who else is doing what in practice. And uh, I know that running one practice can be enough work really, but, um, you have two. So can you tell us a little bit about each? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the main office is in Boca Raton. I, I started practicing in two, the end of 2005 and then, uh, 2010, I opened up my own practice and that was in Boca Raton, Florida. And about, believe it or not, like 18 months after that, I had an opportunity to open up down in a, a trendy kind of up and coming neighborhood down in Miami And it was a low overhead type of situation where we were renting a room that was attached to a gym type of deal. And and I went with it and we opened that up and uh, I hired a doctor, Dr. Larry Masarski from Chicago to come, come down. He was an active release technique provider, which was something I was looking for at the time. And he came down and he's still there and we've moved into a, a nicer facility there. Uh, to where we're at a bottom floor of like a high rise condominium and and that same neighborhood that was kind of trending upward then is now become full fledged um, uh, kind of happening cool neighborhoods so that's been uh, excited to see uh, the growth of of that one. We are sports based so in my Boca Raton office we have about three thousand square feet with a big open rehab area. Um, we have a whole body cryotherapy, a hyperbaric chamber. We're kind of like a, we package it as a sports recovery center, which is separate from the treatment. And we see a lot of active people. And then <clears throat> we um, also have some subletters, like a physical therapy group in my office and massage. And so since I was able to purchase uh, the real estate. So I own the build, the, uh, the office suite of 3000 square feet. Okay. I can, I can kind of sublet out. So we've got a, a pretty fully involved practice here in Boca. 
So um, you mentioned that you do treat a lot of, uh, of, uh, of patients who are athletes. Um, what kind of athletes are they? The weekend warrior type or do you have some pros or a mix? Yeah, you know, it's, I've been very fortunate and it's kind of funny how my, the trajectory of the 14 years of my uh, career has gone to where I think a lot of people now know me as marketing and maybe business. Um, but for a while there, people that within the profession that knew me more was what I did with sports. And I've been very fortunate and I still do a lot with that to where, um, like for instance, in two weeks from now, I'm not sure when this will be released, but we're speaking in mid-February. Um, in two weeks, I'll be heading to the NFL Combine for the 11th year in a row. Um, so I'm the clinical director of a NFL Combine program where we have 35 college guys training down here uh, for eight weeks, and that's with XPE Sports. And then from there, uh, I just control a lot of the medical side of things. And uh, we've, we know we, we have a few potential first rounders. Um, we've got a, a bunch of second, third, fourth rounders. It's a, a fully involved training program down here, and we got college guys from all over the U.S. Uh, doing that. So this is my 11th year uh, with that. And <clears throat> I've been fortunate enough to probably treat over like 500 NFL players because of that. And a lot of them come, yeah, a lot of them come back down here. South Florida is a hub uh, for that. So I've treated a a lot of NFL. I've been fortunate enough. 2011, I traveled on the PGA tour with some professional golfers and then just done other things with other sports. Kind of, you know, if you sports medicine goes or sports chiropractic, if you get, um, I guess known for treating a lot of professional athletes, it'll seep into other sports. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll get the professional tennis player that comes in and the golfer, um, all kinds of different things. But uh, yeah, so I I, fortunate enough to do a lot of that. And then, yes, I get a ton of weekend warriors, a lot of triathletes and runners, local golfers, and it kind of runs the gamut now. So do athletes make up the biggest chunk of your patient base? Uh, not professional athletes. You know, I don't think any, anybody can really do that, but it's a good chunk of it. I would say the active adult is that, you know, um, this morning is a pretty good, uh, chunk of what an office day would be like. And we had a college baseball pitcher. Uh, we had a a couple auto accidents. (laughs) We had two runners and we had, uh, someone that's like a couple of Medicare patients, right? <laughs> right. Um, we had a tennis girl in here just for sports recovery. She's a junior. Uh, we have a huge tennis camp here called the Everett Tennis Academy. And we're fortunate enough to get a fair amount of those uh, junior tennis players that are high level. Uh, so that's kind of a makeup of a morning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to uh, drill down into some of the business side of, of, yep. of things. Um, so to do this, the, the two locations that you have, mm-hmm. um, and you told us, you know, some of the people you have there um, that are supporting what it is you do that you're sort of subletting out to. But how many CAs do you have, uh, I guess, at both locations? I mean, how much of a machine do you have to have put together in terms of people and overhead to do that? Yeah. So in the Boca office, we have um, the front desk person, and then we also have a chiropractic assistant. I have a full-time uh, sports massage therapist that I brought on who um, does a lot of sports massage. He was actually with the Cincinnati Bengals for a couple of years. Him and his wife wanted to move down here. So we were fortunate enough to have him come on board. Um, we are also part of the exercise science program at Florida Atlantic University, which is right down the street. And um, I get an exercise science intern every quarter. So they're always with me. Um, and then we have um, a preceptor right now and then hiring another associate here. In the Miami office, uh, it's a little bit of a smaller operation where we've, um, we're have we inside of a big sports medicine center and we have a treatment room with Dr. Masarski and we have a front desk person. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that we've used in our practice is uh, to help us be more successful um, and just run more efficiently, I guess, are things like online scheduling and yep. text reminders. Do you, do you use those sorts of things? Yeah, I try to, I try to, actually, I did a podcast recently on mine where I talked about um, optimization, automation, and outsourcing. And that's the biggest thing for me is that I try to do all of that. And so um, we have online scheduling, we have text reminders. Um, I outsource a lot of things. Like I outsource my billing. I have a a, a full VA company that I use called Delegate Solutions that helps me with all kinds of things. And so I try to 
um, outsource as much as I can and definitely automate or optimize everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is an important point for chiropractors to sort of understand because I think so many of us come out of school, rightfully so, we want to be fantastic doctors. Yep. Um, but very soon uh, you get into practice and you find that that's not the only hat you're wearing. Uh, there's a lot to being a business owner and other things. And you can own them all maybe at first, but as you become more successful, that gets harder and harder to do. And without really delegating and finding out about these sources, uh, that becomes pretty tough. And I, especially having two locations like like you do. Yeah. One of the tools, so I've, I'm a, I've been a strategic coach member for six years now, and they really help you develop what they call a self-managing business. And one of the things they talk about, a different concept is called the ceiling of complexity. And in any business, you'll hit that ceiling of complexity if you try to do too many things yourself or everything yourself. And you can only do so much. So Strategic Coach really helps with um, working on that type of thing. And and that's been something that I've been really uh, honing in on over the last few years is how to simplify everything I can so that I can scale it and be able to sleep at night, you know, but yeah, it does, it does take a lot of work to have this, but there's the reward is definitely there. Now, have you ever made an investment in a, in a tool or a system and it just flat out, it did not work for you? Hold on one second. Sure. (laughs) Sorry. That's all right. It was happening earlier today and then it wasn't happening at all. Um, yeah, you know, one of the tools that I've kind of invested in and I'm okay with, investing in things. And if it doesn't work, I will just kind of chalk it up to market research, you know, (laughs) or or research and development and just say, okay, it's, that just didn't work. Um, and for me, I would say I put a lot into a virtual summit uh, for my practice. Uh, And it was something I talked about with chiropractors. Like I've done virtual summits for chiropractors. I did a Mm -hmm. marketing and business one. I did two last year and those went really well, but I try to do one for my community around um, injury prevention and performance for triathletes. And it just didn't pan out. It didn't cost me a lot of money other than what I pay for the software and then marketing for it, Facebook ads, but it it was a lot of time Um, and it just didn't bear fruit. And so I'm not afraid to just scrap it and, and not do it again. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've run into some of that ourselves and especially first starting out, uh, you know, we tried doing flyers and and sort of snail mail things and, uh, didn't waste too much money, but uh, not everything, you know, not every dart you throw at the wall (laughs) is going to hit where you want it to. Exactly. Um, well, when I looked at your Facebook page for your practice, um, there are over 3000 likes and I, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, especially for local small businesses. So how have you managed to get that much attention? Yeah. You know, it's funny cause, um, early on, I would say in 2010, when I opened up the practice, 2011, I would say we started doing a lot. And, you know, back then 2012, probably even in a 2013, you could get a lot of traction with your business page. You know, you could post on it and a lot of people would see it and people would like your business page a lot easier. Now it's like really hard to get people to like a business page because <laughs> people yeah. just, you know, it's kind of not as novel as it was back then. It's kind of, it's like back in the late nineties, if you sent out an email to someone, you'd get a 90% open rate and now it's not going to happen. Yeah. So it's definitely harder to get it, but I would say we did it because we've been extremely consistent since about 2011 with developing the business page, posting content, sharing content, um, trying to run Facebook ads towards it, inviting friends that are, um, local in the community to like the business page, just really to, to sum it up, we've been extremely consistent since 2011 and doing that. Um, and we never did anything, you know, how you could try to get like kind of those bogus likes where you could optimize. Yeah. yeah we never even did anything like that. Um, so that's helped. One of the ironic things about it now is I end up getting a lot of chiropractors that are liking my clinic business page. Because mm-hmm. I, I think they're like you know maybe seeing some of the marketing we're doing and stuff, and so now I have to kind of be careful when I um, when I run a, a post or something. If I if I were to target you know um, people that like my business page, it might just go to a lot of chiropractors in different areas that isn't going to serve my local marketing, right? Yeah. Uh, so I've kind of worked around that a little bit. 
Yeah, and I think that's a danger. I see it with students uh, a lot. You know, they they create their Facebook page for their business, and then they share it with their family and friends and all the uh, people they graduated with, of course. And everybody likes it, and they might have three or four hundred likes to start out with, which you need some likes, and that's helpful at the beginning. But they're, you know, my mom loves me too, but it's not, you know, it's not necessarily the person that I'm really want to target my advertising to. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, while we're on that subject, is there anything that you're noticing is getting the most engagement in those posts? Is it is it supporting local businesses and or is it, you know, uh, four out of five chiropractors recommend back, you know, chiropractic for low back pain? Well, what's really garnering the most engagement? Yeah, I think authenticity a lot of times, you know, and sometimes it's it's easier said than done. But we were fortunate. We've been fortunate enough to where uh, I've been on ESPN a couple times. I've been on Fox Sports a couple times, and that really helps those types of things. But then recently, I think it was three weeks ago, we had Fox Sports come in again. We have a professional boxer that's fighting, uh, Anthony Direll, who comes in and does sports recovery. And um, so the whole crew came in, and so we took a picture. We took some pictures of them recording and video and doing all that and this whole, you know, camera crew in our office. So, so that was pretty cool. So I posted that and that got a, you know, a fair amount of engagement. Whereas I post a blog about say mattress, not as much, you know, so right. it's definitely uh, tricky with that. I think people like authenticity a, a lot. Um, and video views is definitely good as well. Videos are still good. And I'm going to stop you right there on the word yeah. authenticity. And the, re- the reason why is I think, we hear it a lot and it's become sort of a, a marketing, especially an online marketing buzzword more and more. What does, what does that mean to you? What's your, what are you doing? You know, your version of being authentic, is it just being yourself or, you know, let me know what you think. Yeah. I think with doctors in particular, it's try to humanize yourself. You know, I, I think, I think chiropractors in general do a better job of that than other medical professions, but people want to know that you are human and they want to see that side of things, you know, like maybe it's sometimes I'll, I I have a Weimaraner, a gray hunting dog. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll post a picture doing something with the dog and that gets pretty good engagement versus other things. So you just want to kind of show that you're just a regular person and and you're a human and not just, you know, on a pedestal as, as a doctor in a community type of thing. And everything's about health and, um, you want to show that side of it, in, in my opinion, you know, to an extent, I don't think you want to be too polarizing. You know, mm-hmm. I think that could be a mistake for sure. And some people do that. Um, I've learned my lesson on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, I agree with you there. And I guess I've seen some doctors do that. And, uh, you know, I think for every, that might be very authentic, but they are turning off. They're losing some people. And yep. um, certainly I, that would be something I wouldn't be comfortable with doing, but um, mm-hmm. you know, apparently it's working for some people. Um, well, you mentioned earlier your podcast. So tell us about that. Yeah, about, um, th- so July of, of 2016, we started the Facebook group and then that kind of spawned the podcast in April of uh, two years ago. So we're pulling up on two year, uh, 100 episode is actually coming up in about wow. five weeks. Yeah. And so I just started it, you know, with an idea of, of marketing and business and um, started chugging away and it's, it's taken off. It's done really well. I mean, I'm not Tim Ferriss by any stretch of the yeah. imagination, but <laughs> um, you know, it's something where I, I, my goal was to alternate between solo episodes and interviews and then try to give wide, you know, wide ranging type of topics within those two and just be uh, something that people can listen to and and learn and grow their practice. You know, if they didn't want to spend a dime on anything that I'm doing, but they just wanted free information, this would be a good outlet for them. And it's kind of an extension of the Facebook group. Yeah. And it's been fun. We'll get back to the interview in just a minute, but first I want to speak to the recent grads and the chiropractic students out there. How successful could you be if you had a resource that clarifies your vision, helped you develop a plan, saved you money, time, and heartache, shortened your learning curve, and helped set you on a course to become profitable within your first few months after opening a practice? Well, look no further. The Cairo Planner is here. 
more than just a journal. It's a guide to creating and launching your practice in 100 days. It's jam-packed with tools, tips, ideas, action steps, resources, and inspiring quotes from some of the top chiropractors and business leaders today. Think of it as your own personal mentor, inspiring you, answering your questions, helping you to set goals, and advising you on the many unknowns of opening a practice. Go to chiroplanner.com today to get your copy. Now back to the interview. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Um, you know, I've listened to a couple and, and they're fun to listen to and you've had some great guests. Do you have a, a favorite guest? Yeah, I've, I've been lucky to have a lot of good guests. And and one of the um, things that I like about pod, and I'll answer the question. One of the things I like about podcasts is it kind of becomes like a, a Trojan horse to get people on your podcast that have a good conversation with them that you may not have been able to reach. Right. And just like, email someone and say, Hey, do you mind if I get on the phone with you and ask you some questions? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's been good with that. And one of the ones I really liked for me, um, was Mark King, who's the president of MPI motion palpation Institute. Mm-hmm. And it was a couple reasons. Cause one, he was a mentor of mine when I was a student and, um, you know, all the way back when I was probably try three and at Logan. And I just learned so much through there. And I've been fortunate enough to, uh, I, I did a, I spoke at one of their events way back in Daytona beach, probably like seven years ago and we played golf and I've gotten to know Mark and then for it to come full circle and have him on my podcast was really uh, great. And then it just was a good conversation. I felt like it was just him and I having a good talk and I, I really enjoyed uh, that episode. He just always has great information and he's got that uh, fun personality that really shines through even an audio podcast. Yeah, it, it is great to be able to, like you said, that Trojan horse to sort of, um, I mean, obviously with this person, you, you know, um, you knew him previously, um, but I know that there's a lot of people that if I were to call them and say, hey, I'd love to pick your brain about some ideas, you know, I think the answer would be no, but you, you want to be on the podcast, I'd love to pick your brain <laughs> about mm-hmm. some ideas uh, and share them with other people that the, like you said, the answer is different. It's a, it's a nice way to be able to do that. Um, so, you know, given that and your, your, your podcast is about modern chiropractic marketing. Um, how has the marketing of your clinic changed, uh, you know, since you've had so many guests on that's, that speak to that subject? Yeah, quite a bit, actually. And I would say um, that's been fun for me because I, I still am in the trenches. I know a lot of people get into coaching and chiropractic marketing or, or whatever, and they get out of practice or are out of practice. And maybe a lot of times it's theory that they're talking about or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But for me, you know, I'm, I'm still in the trenches. I'm still managing practice, still growing, always trying to improve. And I've been able to learn so much from people in, in regards to uh, marketing from what I've learned from them. And so it's definitely changed. And I would say we have a, a very comprehensive marketing approach here that ties in a little bit of things from, from everybody. Um, and it's just been huge to, to have that type of information come in um, to the point where um, I feel like I, I'm not overwhelmed anymore. And it's been very nice to, to have that. And so to, to kind of answer your question, um, I think it's been um, having that, that I've, I've gone from uh, that whole thing where it's like you, you don't know what you don't know, right, mm-hmm. to where I... I know a lot about marketing in business when it comes to chiropractic, but then I also know some of the things I don't know. And I, so I know exactly what's out there that what can, what can be done. And then now I know how to uh, outsource it to certain things. You know, um, I, I've got a company that I work with now that does my marketing for me. I don't do it anymore as far as like uh, Google ads and social media, Facebook ads and landing pages and, you know, quote unquote funnels and things like that. But the the reporting I'm getting is great. And so I'm really diving deep into that. Um, So to to kind of long winded answer is I feel like from the podcast has spawned my practice to have a very comprehensive marketing strategy that is now freeing me up to work on relationships and get out to the community like I used to do a lot more. And so now we've got this kind of combination of really good community outreach and um, a pretty well developed, um, you know, seamless marketing strategy. 
Well, so when you break it down between the community, you know, face-to-face or person-to-person type of networking and the, and the online social media networking is how, you know, is there a percentage you was assigned to each one in terms of what's really working? I, th- you know, that's the thing. And it's going to be funny for me to say it, but I, I think too many chiropractors are putting their, you know, their eggs all in the online marketing basket mm-hmm. and, and they're sitting behind their computer too much. You know, and I get these, I get these phone calls all the time or Facebook messages from chiropractors struggling and, and I'll ask them, I was like, okay, how many, you know, how many meetings did you have last week? And they'll be like, Oh, I didn't have any. And I was like, God, that's crazy to think, you know? Um, and so I think that to answer that question, it really depends on, a lot of factors. You know, there's some clinics that are in network with everything that have been around for 20 years, um, have just a, a really steady stream of business and they got good marketing going on. And it's just, they, they really can't even um, care to have more new patients in office mm-hmm. visits. Right. <laughs> and so I, I see a lot of those docs not necessarily doing as much community outreach, which is, which is fine if that's what they want. And then you get the younger docs, like I mentioned, I think they need to be like 90% community outreach and 10% um, online. But <laughs> uh, so I, I still think the community outreach, the, the networking, the MB meetings, the events, the public speaking, I still think that's the best way to grow your practice. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I just, I ask that question to a lot of folks because I want to know in different regions mm-hmm. and different countries or not countries, but you know, different regions and different areas, there different communities. There's a, a kind of a different pulse. And, uh, but universally, you know, I think every time the, the face-to-face still is really where the majority of the referrals and business come from, but you have to have, like you said earlier, people do want to see a little bit about you, about your life, uh, maybe your, your, you know, your dog or what you had for, uh, dinner the little night before to get to know you as a person. And it's really flipped over the years from, you know, I'll look up this person in the yellow pages and then find out about them when I'm in their office to I've already looked into them online and I've pre-selected myself to go, yep. <laughs> you know, here I am for care. And I, so I, I think you still need that window to the world through the social media side, but, but I yeah, have. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, like I'm actually going to read you our, we have a company scorecard that we do and we set a quarterly goal for different things. And whether it's leading indicators or trailing indicators, we have that. But we right. have attorney meetings. We want to do 10 this quarter. And MD meetings, we want to do one per week. Uh, networking events, we want to do four per month. Videos recorded, we want to do three per month. And blogs written, we want to do at least one a month. And so those are things that we're trying to accomplish. But you can see we're, you know, we're trying to meet with, we're in Florida. We don't do a ton of personal injury, but um, if you can get your practice to be about 15% down here, it just pays so well. And if you yeah. do it the right, if you do it the right way, there's nothing wrong with doing auto accident cases. So, you know, try to increase that. So, yeah, so those are like, we're still doing a lot of different things in the community and that's not even counting just, um, you know, being out and about in the, the community, but we've got a, you know, quite a plan to, to do that with the uh, networking. Well, I've got two sort of general questions here um, for, uh, as it re- regards our, in- <laughs> let me start that over and I'll cut this out. <laughs> yep. Two general uh, questions here for, um, for business, uh, the business side of chiropractic. And, and the first one would be, um, what are you seeing are the most common mistakes uh, that chiropractors are making? And this can be new chiropractors or experienced, but what are you seeing? Yeah, my from a business perspective, the thing that I'm seeing the most that concerns me and, um, you know, sometimes I'll ruffle little feathers when I say this and, and I'll say it point blank to people when I talk to them about it is I'm seeing a trend of chiropractors that are and there's some of them that are doing this successful. So I know I'm going to get some people that are like, oh, well, I'm doing this great. You know, so I'm speaking a little bit in general, but they're veering too far into the um, exercise realm. And in their marketing and their positioning, I can't tell if they are a doctor or if they're a personal trainer. And there's you know nothing against personal trainers and stuff, but you are effectively devaluing your license and your ability to earn, um, uh, you know, better fees if you position yourself. And I can't tell if you're a personal trainer or a doctor. And then on top of that, they're spending 30 minutes with a patient 
and they're collecting a cash rate because they're at a network because obviously in-network insurances are not going to pay for this type of care. Um, and they're charging, you know, $50 a session or whatever. And so I'm saying, okay, you could see two people in an hour. That's a hundred dollars. Like, you know, like that's, mas- that's massage therapy. That's personal training type of uh, income, frankly. Mm-hmm. And our, and, and we spent too many years in school our overhead's too high, our student loans are way too high, and we deserve to be making three hundred to four hundred dollars an hour, and they're not doing that, and they're getting too hyper focused onto this exercise thing. We all can agree that exercise is great. The vast majority of my patients get exercise. But when I positioned myself, it was more to be the person to go to for for me for injuries, for sports injuries and pain, right? Uh, yeah. And I think that's what I'm seeing is there's too many people that are migrating to this. Um, everything they post on Facebook is a, is a corrective exercise, a kettlebell swing or something like that. Something about movement, which is fine. Like, again, I, I think there's people that are doing very well with this, but if you are, you really need to increase your fees or have a, have a, a CA that's helping you with the exercises. You know, like you, you got to get to that point where the math has to work yeah. and what, and to kind of round this out is I'm seeing a lot of evidence informed chiropractors to where the math just is not working. Okay. And, and they're, they're not seeing enough people at a certain amount of rate, right? If you saw one person an hour, but you charge $300 for that session, then great. So be it. Right. But you got to do the math to where a few hundred dollars an hour is coming in to where you can legitimately make an income and to start growing a business successfully. Yeah, boy, it's really interesting to hear you say that because I track a lot of students' progress, you know, from the time they they graduate and and then open their practice and beyond. And so many are moving that direction. Now, I don't come from a sports um, chiropractic background. I've been primarily a family family care or chiropractic, so pretty general. But uh, but my assumption was is that by posting those sorts of videos, it was a lead into saying. I'm part of your tribe and I'm going to serve you and you're going to be congruent with, you know, we're, we're on the same team here and therefore I am a specialist in those injuries. But if that's not happening, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's so much more they could be doing and it sounds like they're just not capturing. Yeah, they're not. And there's some that are doing it right. So again, I'm, there's definitely ones and I, you know, I post exercise videos and pictures. That's fine. I'm not saying against that, but you need to be mixing in certain things that show you as a doctor or treating injuries or talking about injuries or a person realizing that, oh, I'm going to go in and, and he or she's going to fix me, you know, not just um, we're going to do more exercises, right? Um, and so I think that's a, a problem that's happening. Um, and, and so I just think it's a tough model if you're not careful, right? Yeah, I agree. That's great advice. And really, you're the first I've heard uh, to say that. But uh, but thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. I want to switch gears now and just go into some more general talk about you and your life. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple questions here, sort of a lightning round. And let's see uh, 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 really a little bit more dig into your background. So yep. all of us uh, have had you know successes, and you've obviously had many, but we've also had challenges or failures or obstacles. Is there anything you could share with us, be it in your personal life or business life, that was a challenge that you've overcome and maybe something you learned from it and and how you overcame that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Definitely. And I've outlined it in a podcast that I had. I'm I'm sure people that have listened to me before have heard me say it, but I'll go through it again because it definitely was a learning lesson. But, um, you know, everything was great in practice and in life. And, um, you know, I, 2007 got into a business partnership and 2009 I sold out of that to, and then I was able to take that money and open my own practice. Um, didn't have to take out any loans from 2010 to 2013 had a kind of a meteoric rise, was able to buy my office space in 2013, just everything going very well. And then in 2015, uh, so we had uh, on-site corporate chiropractic locations as well. Mm-hmm. And um, in 2015, four things happened. Uh, one was uh, Florida Blue went from being Florida Blue to uh, third party, you know, with uh, American Specialty Health. Mm-hmm. And so that effectively um, reduced our reimbursement from about $75, $80 a visit to 
to a cap of 41 or 46, depending on if you did one to two or three to four region manipulation. Oh, wow. So they basically cut it in half. And that's the biggest insurance carrier in Florida um, by a lot. So that was bad. And then the corporate location we had over in Naples, Florida was about $8,000 a month in revenue with, with really no overhead, um, except for one of the doctors that I paid to go over there and do that. Um, that April 1st, they, uh, they changed CEOs and got rid of that program. So that was 8,000 a month. I was probably losing about 6,000 a month from the blue cross thing. Mm. And that kicked in April 1st. So there was that. And, um, and then, uh, through that, I was also going through a, d- a divorce. So, uh, 2015 was, was not a good year. Uh, but looking back on it now, um, I'm in a really great relationship now. Uh, I'm not beholden to in-network insurances anymore. And I was able to cut a lot of the fat from the practice, um, to where I look now that 2015 was a great year, uh, because I, the only thing that I, I would say from like a business standpoint now that insurances could take away from me that could hurt me would be the auto accident stuff. But again, that's not even a huge part of our practice. Um, so uh, I feel like my practice is really where I want it to be and I'm not beholden to an insurance carrier cutting their reimbursement in half again. So, yeah, the nice part that at least I've found in my life is whenever those downtimes come or a challenge or an obstacle or something, I mean, it never feels good in the moment, but looking back, um, you know, if you handle it right and, and draw the right conclusions, things can really, I mean, you just, you can be better off in so many ways. So mm-hmm. uh, valuable to hear you relate your story of that. Thank you. Um, in, in your life, who are your heroes? Um, I would say, you know, a few things I'll start with, um, and it's people probably, um, have heard me many times, but strategic coach has been really helpful. Um, Dan Sullivan is the creator strategic coach and, um, I think he's 74 years old now and, uh, just, yeah, he's been doing it for quite a long time and they just really have set me on a path of, um, having, a self-managing practice mm-hmm. that's been huge. And so I would say that's a big one. Um, my parents are just exceptional people and, and did so much for me. So I, I can't leave them out. Um, but I, I would say to, to kind of round it out, those are, are my heroes. Well, in your uh, business career, what would you say is the best piece of advice you, you've ever been given? Make it up and then make it real. And again, that was, uh, a Dan Sullivan quote. And I've done that quite a few times to where uh, I'll think of something uh, and or an idea is there. Like for instance, a company called World Fuel Services came to me like in December of 2015, I think it was. It was like, hey, do you, would you be able to develop some kind of online ergonomics portal? Because we do a lot of stuff with ergonomics. And uh and I was like, yeah, I had no idea if we could or not. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and they were willing to pay me up front. So they paid me like $20,000 ahead of time. And they, gave yeah. me six, and they gave me six months to do it. And I just remember saying to myself was that quote was like, I'll make it up and then I'll make it real. And, you know, I took that money and I invested in doing it. I actually spent more than that to get it done right because I wanted to maintain the rights to it instead mm-hmm. of that company maintaining it. And so it's made me more than, than that money. And so that kind of, um, I think, I think chiropractors, I think people that own businesses get in their own way sometimes and they just, uh, they don't move forward because they're unsure or they want everything to be lined up perfectly and the stars aligned before they will commit to something. And so I would say that that's been one of the biggest things that's helped me. Yeah, that, boy, that's great. I love hearing you say that. I just, uh, Somebody a few years ago uh, said done is better than perfect. And, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of try to live by that, at least in my, my business life. And then I recently um, read 10X by Grant Cardone. And he tells a similar story about committing to a television show before he even knew how to do a TV show. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, and he can look back and say, that's how I moved it forward, moved the needle on, on my career. And, and that's apparently what he's always done. So, um, nice to know that that's working across the board when people do things that way. Yeah, it's great. Well, Dr. Christie, what's the best way for people to reach you or find out more information? Yeah, I think the Facebook group is great. You know, you can go to Modern Chiropractic Marketing Group and join that. There's a few questions. You do need to be a chiropractor. Um, 
and then we'll let you in. There's just a lot, of, a lot of good information in there. That's an example of make it up and make it real. It was like, oh, we'll do a Facebook group and then didn't really know how to do that and what to do and how I was going to do it. But a couple of years later, it's, uh, it's got over 3,200 members and it's, it's actively engaged. And um, I think a lot of people learn a lot from it. So I think that'd be a great place to start. Well, we can't thank you enough uh, for your time today and sharing your experiences with everybody who's listening. We appreciate it. And we'll talk again. Thank you. 